one. Hi, this is Damien Marie Adhove, and I am an axiological atheist, which can simply be understood as a value theory or a value science atheist. And uh, I uh, have been on a journey to um, deconstruct uh, religion. And uh, the reason is not because I like religion. In fact, I can't stand religion. But what I want to do is I want to understand how all this happened. How did we get to the religion we have today? And doing so and understanding its parts and its features help us to better understand how to deconstruct and show its lies. So I am happy to announce that I'm going to teach you about totemism, or at least my opinions about totemism, I should say. And so totemism to me uh, seems to be something that I feel starts in Europe about 50,000 years ago with the introduction of humans into Europe. Modern humans, I mean, because there already was arcane humans uh, like Neanderthal. Anyways, um, and this, I think the totemism um, relates uh, to the, and I, I probably pronounced the names wrong, but I think it's uh, called Agrarican culture. And so totemism, I, I think, approximately is about 50,000 year old belief system. And it basically involves these elements to me. A believed spirit-filled life and or afterlife that is attached to or expressed in things or objects. If you believe like this, which I would say most religions in the world have some element of totemism spread through them, then regarding the faith doesn't matter. You are a hidden totemist if you think in this way. So the dispersal of humans is an important to figure out when exactly humans, in a sense, were um, in Europe. And how I feel the spread of totemism happened throughout, in a sense, the planet. So to me, totemism happens uh, in Europe, possibly uh, in Siberia, uh, somewhere around there. It could be um, in uh, Russia, Germany. It could also, though, I feel, um, have a big influence uh, in Spain and, and France, northern Spain and in southern France. And so most of my uh, thinking is that a core element uh, has to be linked to Spain and France. And um, an interesting thing is that totemism uh, in many places is connected to the uh, feeling of incest aversion or uh, uh, and this also, incest to a totemist, though, could include uh, members of one's clan, could include uh, uh, members of a certain totem, and it could in, in include a, a lot of different things. And a, a person um, could have a child, in a sense, and uh, depending on the type of a, a totemistic uh, clan structure, it can either um, be uh, the fact that the person gives a, has a child and they um, are of the same clan or the person has a child and they're actually of a different clan or different totem. But anyway, so incest is, in a sense, is not the way we just think of it as that a direct familial incest, but their, their idea is different. But anyways, they still, in a sense, have that familial uh, incest aversion. And this is interesting to me because the genetics of of modern humans shows that all populations that we know of before 40,000 years ago were much more inbred than the ones living afterwards or living today. And uh, to me, thinking about totemistic culture can be, to me, said to likely start in Europe with the dispersal and this religious transfer connection, somewhat through genes and also otherwise, gives the impression um, that there might have been a transferring between 
uh, types of humans, like the um, Neanderthal possibly and the human, modern humans or arcane humans that um, went uh, into Europe. So we have to understand too that like the initial uh, uh, settlements in sense in Australia occurred about anywhere from 47 to 55,000 years ago. To me, that first wave entering would have actually been animists and likely not, to me, full totemists. I believe that when the uh, people from Asia come down about 30,000 years ago, that that's when they transfer this new thing. There does seem to be a little bit difference in the art prior to 30,000 and after that. And this, in a sense, brings up the idea of the uh, Aboriginals, uh, Australians, and the uh, Papua New Guineas. Uh, in a sense, they have a difference, uh, but they're also implying that they have a long separation. And this separation of these two cultures, in a sense, or peoples, is about 30,000 years ago. Interesting to me. Anyways, um, and... It does seem, you know, that also they could have come from uh, further up in Indonesia or in um, East Timor with connections to there. But anyways, uh, which uh, route they took, I, I, I don't know exactly. But there, furthermore, there's a genetic, an archaeological, anthropological, linguistic data suggests later migrations to Australia in the Holocene epoch particularly from the Asian subcontinent. And to me, I think that is when they're possibly uh, distributed stuff from Europe. I think Europe went to Asia, Asia then spread down. Just like Europe, to me, went to like Siberia, and Siberia went to, um, uh, uh, the, the, over to you know, the Americas and brought that DNA and that culture ideas with them. So... I want to talk a little bit about genetics because you can give a lot of speculation. You can look at tools. You can ponder things. But really, to me, genetics helps us understand who, where, when, how, what, in a sense, in, in the big picture. So the basal um, para group for K to B has not been identified among living males or in recent ancient remains. K to one B known previously as hologroup MS and hologroup P, or P295. Also, I don't know why they, they have so many names, also known as K2B2, are the only primary clades of K2B and K2B1. Its subglades and P are virtually restricted geography to Southeast Asia and Oceania today. P is most common found in Oceania, especially most common, though, in things like, or I shouldn't say things, excuse me, people like uh, uh, Papua New Guineas, Malaysians, and uh, indigenous Australians, and Filipinos. It was found in um, 40 percent within the Areta of Banata, I don't know how to pronounce that right. Whereas, uh, in striking contrast, P1 or P M45 and its primary subglades of Q and R now make up the most frequent hologroup in Europe. The Americas and Central Asia and South Asia. Estimates for the branching of K and K2 and K2B and P point to rapid diversification within K2 that likely occurred in Southwest Asia. The subglades westward expansions of P, P1, Q, R, and so on. Let's focus a little bit on R. R1 has been common throughout Europe and South Asia since prehistory. 
I think that this is an important thing to understand and the, I believe the transfer of genetics and also in a sense the transfer of these ideas to me. Anyway, so uh, interestingly, hologlyphs R and Q, which make up the majority of lineages in Europe, Central Asia, and the Americas, resent, re represent only subglades of K2B. That is not genetically restricted to Asia or Oceania. Hologroup R is believed to have risen during the Upper Paleolithic era, about 27,000 years ago. Only one confirmed example of basal R has been found in the 24,000-year-old 20, remains, known as M1, sorry, MA1, found in the Malta Burut culture near Lake Balka in Siberia. They also, uh, that DNA is connected to the Native Americans. Uh, or, or I should say the indigenous people of the Americas. Okay, the uh, wide geographical distribution of R1B in particular has also been noted among living uh, examples found in Central Asia, including the deepest subclade of R, M269, or R1B1A1A2. Wow. The most numerous branch of RB, let's say R1B, is in Western Europe. Ah. So, uh, M1 in Africa is a result of a back migration to Africa, which occurred sometime after the out migration of Africa 40,000 years ago. There's also, in a sense, um, connections uh, in Asia with the agrarian culture that I mentioned earlier. To me, understanding the archaeological and anthropological understanding of religion is what I try to understand. Because I think it gives us more in a sense of a scientific and just uh, than, than just simple theories. So, did Neanderthals help inspire totemism? One could wonder, because there is art dating to around 65,000 years ago in Spain, and it must have been created or left, if that is the right date, by Neanderthals. Totemism, as seen in Europe 50,000 years ago, to me, mainly involves the agrarian culture. The pre-agrarian, in a sense, is the uh, I think the Neanderthal, and it's a French word, but I'm not good at these reading words uh, that are uh, there are other languages. But anyways, Chaperterona. Anyways, and this is seen in Western Europe, mainly in Spain and France, possibly a tradition or cultural diffusion between Neanderthals and humans around 50,000 to 40,000 years ago. Arcane Acrurian and Proto Acrurian humans in Europe date to around 46,000 to 35,000 years ago. And Acrurian, which is the classical or early to late Acrurian, is humans uh, in Europe and other areas around 38 to 26,000 years ago showing the transfer and movement. In a general way, to me, religion kind of all starts with pre-animism, then goes to animism, a theoretical belief in supernatural powers or spirits. And this is physically expressed in or with, in a sense, totemism a theoretical belief in a mystical relationship with powers or spirits through a totem item, in a sense. 
which then elicits to me a full-time specific person to perform this worship and believe interaction, thus shamanism which is a theoretical belief in the accents and influence with the spirits through rituals. In addition, there is further employment in a sense added to this shamanism, totemism, animism, like Legos, is the addition of myths and gods as to the all above that's already there, which to me equals paganism and is often a lot more nature-based than most of the current top world religions, although I think they all started in all of the above. Thus, hinting to their close link to more ancient religious thinking forms of which they stem. My hypothesis is expressed with an explanation building on the theoretical house. Think of a house as a modern religious development full package, but then break it down. It seems that ancient people had to survive amazing threats in a perceivably dangerous universe, and superstitions perceived as things as good or evil, because we've personified, in a sense, with animism, the world itself seeing the whole world alive, the whole world with intent, the whole world with magic. And this sense of immorality that that brings, the right and wrong, the good, the bad, the taboo, the imperfection of the belief in soul, the actions, which as though it affects, but it does not, Still, people live that this is true, the same way this led to ancestor worship in our deep past. Presumably, this ancestor worship led to the belief in supernatural beings, which some of these were turned into the belief in gods. This feeble myth called gods were just a human conceived idea made from nothing into something over and over again, changing again and again, taking on more as they evolved. And all the while, they are thought to be special. However, it is just a deep expression of supernatural animistic spirit believe perceived as something sacred. Historically, around 5,000 years ago in large city-state societies such as Egypt and Iraq culminated to make religion into something kind of new, a social-cultural government religious monarchy, where all or at least many of the people of this such large city society seem to be familiar with and committed to the extent of the religion authored to them. As it integrates into life and identity like a package of controlled dynamics with a fixed, closed, magical thinking doctrine that cannot be questioned. However, with judgment, this integrating religion identity package is seen as nothing more than dogmatic propaganda, certainly did not exist in anything real, or it, it can be seen to have de-evolved our humanity to the extent it was highly limited. In most smaller prehistoric societies, they seem to lack most of the strong control dynamics with this fixed magical mindset doctrine that could not be questioned. These new magical beliefs could be at times added, removed, 
you see many people just want to see the religion develop. They don't see the dynamics that they are playing in. Even if it's not what is really what they believe, they simply want to fit in. Instead, all this fondness for these large fragments of the past is still this domestication of religion. Religion, as we think of them today, are not a new fad. But the concepts that they authored so long ago are still written in the words they believe today. Even if we go back to around 6,000 years ago, a time in the human uh, elements started to arrange this world-dominating kind of religions, these advanced religions with militaries. This amounts to uh, the sense of something, but we can see the slow evolution of religion that at least started 70,000 years ago with, own, with one of the oldest obvious ritual worships of a stone snake in South Africa. This message of how religion and gods are intertwined with human frailty is clear in how man-made the ideas are. Seen in the archaeological evidence, they developed slowly and were intertwined, reinvented, reinterpreted, supplanted, piece by piece built, which discredits them all. This seems to be a simple point, which some are just not grasping, how devastating to all these claims that claim truth in religions. We can see the lies clearly laid out for us in archaeological sites. So here we go, the understanding of the evolution of religion really quick from me. It's animism, or I said pre-animism in a sense, of people's uh, human, uh, early arcane humans before us, and animism at 100,000, totemism at 50, shamanism at 30, Paganism starts at, at about 12,000. Progressed organized religion starts about 5,000 years ago. Religion, it must be understood, is just an evolved product. What we don't understand, we often come to fear. That which we fear, we often learn to hate. Things we hate, we usually seek to destroy. It is thus upon us to try to understand the unknown or the unfamiliar, not letting fear drive us into the unreasonableness, arms of hate and harm. Religion beliefs often don't stay in the belief category as if it is something chosen temporary, if needed or changeable, if required. No, what is most common is that religious belief are completely infused into a person's chosen identity. Thus, it is not that they believe it is more a factor of what they think they are. What this means is if they are later challenged and given reasons to let this belief go, largely disrupting to them because they and their belief are mixed in the person's identity, making it seem as a real loss, not just a possible belief loss, but a perceived personal identity loss. So early animism we see in Africa in a, a grave 
with red ochre and a shell bead. Uh, it's a anywhere from 100,000 to 74,000 years ago in Border Cave, South Africa, of a child. Then the interesting uh, thing is we find 75,000 years old crystal stones that were made probably just for the beauty of them or some re religious mindset. Now think about it. Crystal stones, a clear stone. So if you have a clear stone, it would be a, the unique in the, all the other stones because all the other stones, in a sense, can't be seen through. This would look like, you know, water or ice that somehow is, is a stone. It would, I could see where someone could view that in a magical context. So, the, as I said, the first worship is anywhere from 75 to 70,000 years ago in South Africa. Then we have the uh, ladder-shaped figure on a cave wall in Spain by the Neanderthals, possibly 65,000 years ago. And so, uh, what about Neanderthals? Well, scientists have found the first major evidence that Neanderthals made, in a sense, cave paintings, indicating that they had an artistic sense similar to our own. A new study led by the University of South Hampton and the Max Planck Institute for Evolutionary Anthropology showed that these paintings in, uh, in Spain were created more than 64,000 years ago, before present. Modern humans were not in Europe or believed to be at this time in Spain. This means that the Paleolithic Ice Age cave art, including the pictures of animals and thoughts, geometric signs, must have been made in a sense possibly by Neanderthal, a sister species to us Homo sapiens, sapiens. and Europe, Europe's uh, sole human inhabitants in a sense at the time. It also indicates that they had a similar artistic sense. And possibly, as I think it could be, may have even transferred some of that to us. Or at that same time that we interacted, we transferred stuff to them. Anyways, um, in terms of thinking symbolically, though, they seem similar in a sense to uh, modern humans that came to the area. And in the Journal of Science... The study revealed how an uh, international team of scientists used state-of-art techniques uh, to figure this out. And uh, there, there's a possible Neanderthal origin, in a sense. And so, also Neanderthals are our closest, in a sense, extinct relative. But for a long time, they had this bad reputation of being backwards. But I think that that's unjust and uncalled for. Early modern humans, for example, made cave paintings. But even though Neanderthals used pigments and decorated possibly themselves with things like eagle claws and shell beads, there was no clear proof, in a sense, for a long time of cave paintings. One theory goes to develop that Neanderthals might have developed their rudimentary culture after modern humans arrived in Europe some 40 to 50,000 years ago. But to me, this is an odd thinking because they've been wearing eagle claw uh, necklaces for probably 130,000 years. Uh, evident for um, a eagle talon with bones, I don't know, gut sinew tied around it, the hole in um, found in Israel at 130,000. Uh, Neanderthal, the Neanderthal was uh, the only proven human in Europe at the time. Further. Supporting Neanderthal as an artist theory relates, in a sense, to uh, decorated seashells 
found in a Spanish cave dated to more than 115,000. Perforated shells found in sediments in a cave that date to between 115 and 120,000 years ago. There is no argument that there were Neanderthals in Europe doing these kind of things. The argument is how spread it is and if it was spread to or from humans. I think it could have been a little bit of both. There is no evidence of modern humans in Iberia in the sense before 41,000 years ago. Neanderthals existed for, in a sense, twice the time that modern people have, if not more than that. In a sense, while Neanderthals may have uh, etched this crisscross uh, pattern shape uh, flute, also uh, Homo sapiens uh, achieved similar things at this time. And it's interesting that there's a uh, cave paintings, and also in Germany, there's a thing uh, looks like a lion um, humanoid uh, figure found in a uh, cave in Germany. And uh, it can be anywhere from 38,000 uh, years ago to uh, possibly 41 uh, or 42. Neanderthal ritual or religious practice around 50,000 years ago could be possible with the burial in uh, uh, southeast Spain of a female covered with rocks and turned with a cut-off panther claw, suggesting that Neanderthals, much like uh, today's bear hunters, ceremonially cut off the panther claw and kept them as totemistic trophies. This 50,000-year-old Neanderthal burial ground uh, eventually included the remains of at least three individuals intentionally buried, each with the Neanderthal's uh, arms folded and the hands were close to the head, done in a sense ritual way. Remains of ochre, and, uh, oh, sorry, Remains of other Neanderthals have been found in this position as well, suggesting that it held some sort of meaning and a cultural distribution. The remains of six to seven other Neanderthals, including one baby and two juveniles, have also been excavated at the site. The tallest individual appears to have been an adult who stood about five foot one inch. So, 50,000 years ago, to me, is a time of progressed religion. 50,000 years ago marks the transition from early prehistory. There is evidence of burials with grave goods and the appearance of anthropomorphic images. Uh, and these are placed and uh, painted in caves. To me, the caves, in a sense, could be like a uh, pseudo-womb that they enter, because it seems that they don't do their art in a sense like you would think. Everyone, I, I first thought, you know, you just do art by the entrance of your cave, you're living there, eating, you just draw, do a drawing, and then you can look at it all the time. No, they would go way, way, like I then one time it was like almost two miles into the cave, way down, in the, the and then they, 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 you know, had to go over like a... <laughs> a 15 foot like thing or something. I mean, it's like crazy just to get to this place and do art in the dark, in the deepest bowels, in the sense of the earth. And to me, they suggest that, that uh, modern humans have begun to believe in these superstition ideas. And to me, uh, this totemistic and then revolves into shamanistic ideas. Likewise, this time, humans have evolved uh, the traits associated with modern human behavior that we think of today. People 50,000 years ago were not that much different than we are today. Much of the evidence comes 
from the late Stone Age, as well as sites in Africa. Modern human behavior includes abilities such as modern language, abstract thought, symbolism, and of course, sadly, religion. Like most behaviors that are found in societies throughout the world, religion in some form must have been present in a sense you can see in these ancestral human populations. Certainly these exhibited behaviors are telling us something. So, Totemism begins around 50,000 years ago in Europe, to me, mainly with the Agurian culture. So, Neanderthals evolved out of, in a sense, later populations of Homo Heidelbergus at the end of the last glacial period. The Neanderthals enlarge their originally exclusive European settlement area, expanding to the Near East, parts of Central Asia, as far west, I'm mean, sorry, as far east as the Atai region of Siberia, at least. Neanderthals north, uh, in a sense, divide, uh, changed, and they started to go south. The culture, in a sense, continually uh, between the Bano Hunnic and the regional uh, Middle Paleolithic remains are still open to debate due to a lack of association with human marine, remains. But these are possibly the um, culture of early um, humans in Europe that um, interacted with the Neanderthal culture and then made the uh, agrarians to me. Neanderthal, uh, sorry. So there's Neanderthal um, remains uh, dated to around uh, 45,000 years ago in an area that could have been inhabited at that time almost uh, close to or close to where humans were uh, settled. The earliest connection, uh, in a sense, concerns the um, possible Levant and its distribution to uh, Central Europe. And the Bahanic and similar assemblages in Eastern Europe and North Asia. Similarities have also been documented between the Levantin early Hamar, uh, Ahamaran and the European proto agrarian, therefore identifying the first occurrence of these technologically similar lithic industry cultures in the Levant and in Europe hold potential information about dispersals. In the realm of culture, the archaeological evidence also supports a Nathanerol contribution to Europe's earliest modern human societies, which feature personal ornaments completely unknown before, it seems, in the imagination and characteristics are such of Neanderthal-associated archaeological sites. Cave art dated to, uh, like I said, at least 64,000, uh, possibly more than 66,000, and likely painted by Neanderthals, could be in a sense a precursor to the modern human's preference for the same behavior, as well as possibly, um, there's another uh, Neanderthal cave painting at 42,000, in southern Spain when uh, it was still not possible that human modern humans have been in the area unless it was the first ones Neanderthals in a sense manufactured their own culture diffusion
Possibly a portion of ornaments can be seen in early Champanaran layer or for the Neanderthals can be interpreted possibly even as these newcomer humans activities in the cave or not. There are some deposits on top of the earlier or later de um, deposits. In this, in a sense, maybe that they uh, could be seen as that they're the ones that produced some of the lithics or they did it with the Neanderthals. Bone artifacts, including ornaments. In a sense, uh, the ornaments were made uh, by the same technique employed in the production of the agrarian ornaments later and thus testify to a local and regional production that continued through time possibly. In some it seems like that the Neanderthal Chapanaric, whatever it is, were likely the ancestors of the agrarian. The two groups were contemporaries and possibly encountered and even confronted each other. We can think that intergroup relations of hunter-gatherers, especially if they were belonging to different, you know, ethno-linguistic or cultural entities, could have been friendly, they could have been indifferent, or it could have led to conflicts. Who knows? But there is some transfer, and genes and otherwise, possibly. Therefore, in general, time frame, as long as we don't have the intact articulated Neanderthal burials, clearly showing that it's a Neanderthal culture, it could quite possibly be that the prehistoric culture is one of modern humans. The European Monasterium is the product of Neanderthals before this. It extends roughly from 160,000 to 40,000 when it changes. And the younger um, deposits are stone industries blended with earlier tools, in a sense, from the Middle Paleolithic, Mo Mosterin, and the Upper Paleolithic, agrarian style tool types, it seems. However, just don't know. In a sense, it could have been a diffusion of cultural things. It might have taken place between modern humans and Neanderthals once, maybe multiple times. Maybe they found items that were already made and didn't have direct transfer and simply just copied items that were found. Don't know. But they did mate, so they definitely, there was some, some transfer of at least genetics, if nothing else. And in a sense, these so-called transitional industries for these cultures are in a sense a key understanding of these possible replacement process of the Neanderthals by modern humans in Western Asia. While in Europe, the older monasterian industry of the Middle Paleolithic can clearly be attributed to the Neanderthals, and the later Upper Paleolithic assemblages could possibly be either modern humans or Neanderthal. The nature of the makers of these transitional uh, industries of tools has long been disputed. Let's go back to the human genetics for a second. Hologoop OM175 is a descendant of hologroup NOM214 and first appeared according to different theories either in Southeast Asia approximately 40,000 years ago or between 31 to 51,000 years ago. This hologroup appears in 80 to 90 percent of most of the populations of East Asia and Southeast Asia and is most exclusive to that region is M 
one seven five. It is almost non-existent in Western Siberia, Western Asia, Europe, and most of Africa and the Americas, where its presence may be the result of recent migrations only. Certain subglades of OM175 do achieve significant frequencies <clears throat> uh, K2B uh, probably around 50,000 years old is the ancestor of uh, the hollow group uh, K2. And um, K2 uh, or KM526 is found in Southeast Asia starting around 30,000 years ago to 40,000 years ago, splitting into K3, M, N, O, P, S, Y, uh, hollow groups M, is a descendant from the hollow group K2B1 and is presumably first uh, appeared uh, between 32 to 47,000 years ago in South Asia. Most populations, 50% to 100% in West uh, Papua New Guinea, belong to hollow group M. To, uh, P256 and it likely originated in Malaysia and then spread into Indonesia to Micronesia and New Guinea. Hollow group S or M230 uh, is found primarily in populations in Papua New Guinea with lower frequencies in Malaysia and Indonesia. Possible time of origin is 28,000 to 41,000 before present and possibly originated in Papua New Guinea or Indonesia. K2B1, its subglade, and uh, P are virtually restricted in a sense to South Asia and Oceania. So our B1A though could have uh, different origins in different areas and different transfers. Um, there's been one, two, three, four, five, uh, six almost like uh, ideas of, of where it could be exactly somewhere between Europe, um, you know, Asia, it, it just depends, or the Middle East. So Argurian culture though in general to me is uh, anywhere from about 48 to 47 to uh, 41,000 years ago is sort of like its uh, thing. Interesting enough, the um we see a lot of uh like in um peru and stuff you have the flattening of the heads and there's some of that in asia and stuff too well to me that it that i think that that could be linking to an older culture so the first evidence for possible skull modification was among our ancestors and it comes from a 45 it comes from 45,000-year-old Neanderthal skulls from Sindar Cave in Iraq. After the dispersal of modern humans out of Africa sometime around uh, um, 70,000 years ago or so, modern humans appeared in, uh, the, in a sense, Western Eurasia fossil record, and certainly by 45,000 years ago. 
they begin to transition out from the Neanderthal occupation before them into this expanding modern human populations. And one of these early people um, was uh, a man that they found, um, and it's 45, around 45,000 years ago in Russia, or Siberia, Western Siberia. And uh, there's uh, one in Russia, also uh, a burial, that is 39,000 to 36. There's one in Italy that's 41 to 39. And then there's one in uh, Romania, or some, I should say some, because it could be more than one, but there's evidence in Romania for 37,000 to 42,000 years ago. Around 6 to 9% of the genome of a certain arcane individual found, a modern human though, yeah, it was derived in a sense from uh, Neanderthals. Any cane individual had a Neanderthal, Neanderthal ancestor as recently as four to six generations back. The origins of Europeans used to seem straightforward, but it's not. The first modern humans uh, moved into Europe at least by 45,000 years ago perhaps more, perhaps occasionally meeting with Neanderthals whose ancestors uh, had inhabited Europe for at least 400,000 years before us. Then starting uh, after 10,000 years ago, you have the influx of farmers that came from the Middle East spreading rapidly throughout Europe. Mainly they came from uh, somewhere in uh, eastern uh, um, Turkey. The Bako Chryso site is one of the earliest known agrarian burials, among one of the earliest burials in layer 11. Two pierced animal teeth were found and oriented to um, this abstract assemblage, and they were dated to around 43,000 years ago. And they currently represent some of the oldest ornaments in Europe by modern humans. With an approximate age of 46,000 years ago, a human fossil, uh, human fossil consisting of a pair of fragmented mandibles, whether these are humans or, in a sense, uh, actually a Homo, Homo sapien or Neanderthal is still somewhat disputed. Importantly, Aquarian sites um, in northwest uh, of Beirut in Lebanon are dated to approximately 45,000 years ago or earlier. Ziggoro, uh, Zergos, there it is, <laughs> mountains in Kurdistan, located in northeast Iraq, held the first evidence for possible skull modification among our ancestors in, um, in the form of the 45,000 uh, year old Neanderthal skulls in Cinder Cave. Uh, and they were inhabited by Neanderthals for over, in a sense, a span of 30,000 years. In a sense, they were there from 60,000 to 35,000 until the arrival of modern humans, in a sense, and after, possibly. The Sindar skeletons and their burials suggest complex socialization skills at this time. Caring for other members of their group is evident that the Anarthals were doing this. Archaeologists believe the Sendar 1 was taken care of by other Neanderthals in his social group. It would have been very difficult for him to live long enough with his severe injuries. His partially uh, um, healed, in a sense, without help from others, he would have died. 
Both Sindar 1 and Sindar 5 exhibit what is seeming evidence of artificial cranial disformation. The most striking aspect of these skulls is their combination of frontal flattening and the unnatural curve of the back. Sindar 5 shows significant forehead flattening, it seems. 4.5 standard deviation from the general population. There is also a report of a 20,000 year old skull found near Beijing, China that may have been modified as well. Then we have the Ko Swamp from Australia, possibly dating to as early as 22,000 years ago. It has at least 40 individuals who were buried there with grave goods, some of which were mussels and shells, and some of them were stone artifacts. There also was uh, uh, marsupial teeth and, of course, the red ochre. There is also a report um, in the sense of a uh, cranium from the site that south uh, it was broad and elongated and the forehead had been flattened in a sense artificially and it's dated this one in Australia is dated from 14,000 to uh, 9,000 years ago. Australia's ancient inhabitants were among some of the first to deliberately disform the shape of their skulls. The earliest uh, examples of intentional skull disformation in the Americas is found in Peru and it's dated to around 9,000 to 8,000 years ago. The practice uh, put down deep roots in Peru spreading throughout the Andean communities and the rest of the continent from there, it seems. Excavations of ancient Peruvian remains have been found in a vast majority of them. It seems possibly up to 90% of them have deformed skulls. The Agrarian Culture Who were the indigenous people in a sense, in Indonesia, before the Chinese, in a sense, and the people from the Indian continent migrated there. This, to me, brings up the idea of early human migrations. Sequencing one Aboriginal uh, Australian genome from an old hair sample in Western Australia revealed the individual had descended from people who migrated into East Asia between 62 and 75,000 years ago. This supports the theory of a possible large single migration into Australia and New Guinea before the modern Asians, which got to the area about 25 to 38,000 years ago. And I think that's when they brought the totemism and some of their uh, type of shamanism ideas. And their later migration, in a sense, uh, these same kind of peoples, to me, into North, uh, North America. This dispersal is, uh, in a sense, separated, but in some ways transfer connected. And I think around that time, totemism enters the uh, uh, region from these arcane early Europeans by way of Siberia, thus through Asians. One of the sense gives rise to the modern Asians in the area about, and Asians in general, about 25 to 38,000 years ago. We also find evidence of gene flow between populations of two dispersal waves prior to the uh, divergence of the North American continent from the modern Asian ancestors. It is surmised the DNA that split between Europeans and Asians dating from 17 to 43,000 years ago before present. 
Hollow groups A, B, and G originated about 50,000 years ago. And uh, sequence uh, since colonized Siberia, Korea, and Japan by about 35,000 years ago. Several phenomenon traits associated with uh, mongoloids with a single mutation of the uh, EDAR gene dated to about 35,000 years ago. A Paleolithic site on the Yama River in Siberia at 71 uh, north lies well above the Arctic Circle and it dates to 27,000 years ago before present, during glacial times. This site shows that the people adapted to these harsh climates even in these high latitudes. Late Pleistocene environment much earlier than previously thought. Moreover, <clears throat> the uh, genome of a 35,000 year old Homo sapien from Europe, the individual from uh, Romania, supports a Paleolithic back migration to Africa. The individual was a basal hologroup for U6, not previously found in any other humans, present day. The derived six holotypes are predominantly found in present day Northwest African populations and are found in Europe and have been attributed to a recent gene flow connected to North Africa. The presence of basal hologroup U6 in Southeast Europe, Romania, at 35,000 years ago confirms a Eurasian origin of U6 mitochondrial lineage. Consequently, it can be proposed that this individual um, is an offshoot of the Southeast Europe that can be traced to the earlier Upper Paleolithic back migration from West Asia to Africa, during which time the U6 lineage diversified and emerged into the present day U6 African lineages. After the dispersal of modern humans out of Africa, hominoid similar mythology and present day humans spread uh, into Western Asia. The first insights of the genetics of early Eurasians, modern humans, were recently provided by uh, four ancient genomes. One in Western Siberia dated to 45,000 years ago, Russia at uh, 39,000 years ago. Although the first genomes of the ancient African individuals, Ethiopia, date to about uh, 4,000 to 5,000 years ago, identified with a, another back migration from Eurasia to Africa and it was within the last 4,500 years ago. The scarcity of older human remains in North Africa has presented researchers uh, with uh, interesting questions about obtaining direct evidence for this phenomenon of the period. Forty-three uh, thousand. 500 years ago, we um, have the rock art uh, with it that is uh, 43,000 years ago rock art, proto agrarian culture to me, but it could possibly done, you know, Neanderthals or modern humans. Images are possibly depicting 
sea lions. So possibly Neanderthals were hunting and eating sea lions, or at least drawing them. And these uh, looks like with red ochre. But uh, charcoal remains found beside the six paintings uh, in Spain uh, is where they get the evidence for the dates. So there was a uh, large, in a sense, artistic explosion <laughs> that it kind of, kind of happens when uh, humans, modern humans, enter uh, Europe. There seems to be a, the culture from then is um, from about for at least forty-three thousand to thirty-five thousand is just an explosion of art and ideas. So there's um, from Russia. Uh, there's 43,000 year old, um, looks like a pendant or it put, possibly could have been something that they, uh, wore, um, like as a bead on their clothes or something. And it's made from a, uh, fossilized, uh, squid. So there's, um, a little, uh, plaque piece and, um, it's possibly relating to agrarian. It is similar to a, other agrarian culture type items. And it seems to be, to me, the one side has a man, it could be even like the lion man um, from Germany. Uh, also, in a sense, decorating its other side is a, a whole bunch of um, little nick marks. And um, the arms also have lines that seem like decoration which do appear to uh, also be on agrarian type of ideas for at least a few from anywhere from 43,000 to 28,000 years ago this little statue thing or whatever uh, it um, it's also associated possibly with connections uh, to the statue like I said from from Germany the ivory statue, though, uh, is about 32,500 to 38,000. There are, in a sense, on the tablet that I'm, uh, it has about 86 notches. A number has possibly two special meanings. If you subtract uh, from a year, it equals the average number of days that are equivalent to pregnancy and the number of days um, that one of Orion's uh, two prominent stars uh, is visible. It's possible to ancient you know humans this might have been a link to human fertility to spirits to stars in the sky. Okay, there's cave art um, in Spain uh, dated to 40,800. And humans were kind of in the area, like I said, 41,000. So it could have been uh, uh, modern humans and it could have been Neanderthals. And I think uh, it's basically a dots made. I think that um, adding of dots could reference also stars. Even something like the sun in the day and stars at night, or including the moon, um, or other celestial bodies. To me, stars in general as ancestors, animal spirits, and possibly even deities is a scene at least back as far as 6,000 years ago. Cave art, um, as this such, uh, could also imply that. And uh, there's also um, from the Desovian cave, in, uh, which is a cave in the Atai Mountains of uh, Siberia, Russia. Uh, there's an incredible 40,000-year-old um, bracelet believed to be the oldest um, ever found, especially of such quality. And it suggests that this ancient, you know, Human uh, race basically drilled. It was probably the Dissovians, but it could have been modern humans. But it's believed to be Dissovians, the Dissinovans, or whatever. 
And um, it seems that it could have used possibly drills. At first, though, thinking of like you know someone drilling, even drilling fast, it seems like to us uh, like something that um, would be odd. But to me, taking a stick and spinning it real fast is something you could have already been doing to build fires. So I don't see it as as some kind of a like I know some people get like ancient alien type of thing. That's it, ridiculous. Modern humans, and even our arcane, you know. Uh, Ancestor, you know, humans, the Cinevans and Neanderthals were probably not as stupid as people like to think they are. And uh, so that, that I think that that's what we need to do is to understand that the, these uh, people before us uh, were just very close to like us. Anyways, there's cave art uh, of at least 40,000 years ago in Indonesia. And painting uh, one of thousands is, in a sense, a stencil drawing in limestone caves and tucked into remote mountains on the far eastern edge of Borneo in, in uh, Indonesia, part of Indonesia. And it's believed that it could date up even up to possibly uh, 52,000. Also, around 40,000 to 35,000 years ago, the remains of some personal ornaments, awls, and um, per pierced like uh, animal teeth that use as pendants, ivory pendants, and uh, these, in a sense, are excavated from the uh, Neanderthal levels at the site. Then the um, to me uh, there's the the most in a sense uh, um, unique is in a sense uh, what they call the Venus of Holofus, I don't know Holofest or whatever, um, from Germany. A Venus is just like what they consider like a goddess or like a female figure or something. I don't I'm not saying this is a goddess. To me, it's a pendant. Um, it does represent a female. I probably just some form of hunting magic or belief and and some sort of goodness of life or whatever fertility well being it's it's possibly you know data forty thousand to thirty five thousand and it comes from the aquarium and uh it was pierced um like I said so it was worn. And in place of it, at the head is where it, where it has the um, perforated uh, hole so it can be uh, since worn in, as an amulet or a pendant or something. And in the region of Germany, the air it's found is a number of caves that yield many uh, mammoth ivy artifacts in the Upper Paleolithic period. Approximately 25 items have been discovered to date. This is a concentration of uh, evidence of these behaviors of mar modernity. And especially when it includes figurative art. And there also is musical instruments. And uh, uh, among humans of the period from 40,000 to 30,000 years ago. And it is speculation that this is the uh, agrarian culture. Within a distance uh, um, of two feet of the Venus, there was found a flute made of vulture bone. Additionally, and I think that could have something possibly to do with sky burials, the why that they re reverence of the bird. In addition, artifacts um, excavated from the same cave layer include uh, Napping debris, work bone, carved ivory, as well as remains of tarpon, reindeer, cave bears, woolly mammoth, uh, alpine um, ibexes. 38,000 years ago, there's an engraving of an onk, a ancient cow, with, a, to me, a seeming totemistic expression. 
it's basically the outline or tracing outline of kind of a bull and with small horns and um it's interesting though is it has a whole bunch of dots like inside some of the body not the entire thing but like the lower part and then the back um, not part of the head or upper shoulder but to me what's interesting is that it's believed that the dots are made first and then they traced in a sense like the constellations to me like that the idea that um a group of stars represents something like Taurus not saying that that for sure I know this it's just saying it's very interesting it's certainly it, it possibly leads to those later ideas we can confirm though from the this that image making was already being practiced in pointillism by Europe's earliest human culture the agrarian 16 engraved and otherwise modified limestone blocks were created at least 38,000 years ago confirming ancient origins of this technique <clears throat> by using small dots they are create an illusion of a larger image around 37 to 32,000 years ago is agrarian bison skull um, skulls that were recovered but one skull particularly the possibility of symbolic and ritualized item certainly a major animal that they were using in hunting in a sense shown by ornamentation for example there's also a connection to that being a um, ritualistic animal because you see it in um, lots of cave art including uh, caves in France now the bull head that they found is a, a, a bull that had um, been basically uh, left to be defleshed and then the skull was recovered this almost makes me think of it also could also be possibly trophies but I think it's probably more sacred because if it was trophies there would be lots of them as opposed to just a few and the trophy though or style head belongs to a male individual the many depictions of bisons in the Paleolithic art also share this somewhat symbolic uh, connected interpretation possibly well some of the earliest um, since graphic representations in France in occurring wall images such as at the grotto of Chaliot and the grotto of the Alderin, as well as ivory sculptures from southwest Germany and painted limestone blocks from Italy seem to be connected or share a, a general transfer of ideas possibly although a rich in a sense corpus of agrarian can be thought of as really encompassing 40,000 to 28,000 years ago with things like wall paintings engravings and the boss relief sculptures compared in a sense to uh, these paintings there also is a lot of um, what appears to be vulvic uh, or vagina uh, references especially just from the front not looking at it like open or anything sexual but just as if someone was standing interesting enough <clears throat> most of the representations they have representations of hair in the upper paleolithic but a lot of the representations are almost all of them I can think of in the sense that they think of as um, relating to the vulva are actually hairless now does that mean they're young or does that because there's ones that appear to be not young very in a sense overweight and could probably elderly and yet they still have this so maybe they actually were shaving because the, the certainly we think that our our things aren't we're, are, weren't sharp enough back then because there are rocks uh volcanic rock 
is so sharp it could be used as scalpels today. And <laughs> anyways, and so the oldest um, of these uh, graphic images of what could be a stylized version of the vulva or whatever. Um, actually looks more like a placenta drawing of a placenta. And it's 35,000 years ago from France. So in, in um, 35,000 to uh, 30,000 years ago, in prehistoric ornaments, in a sense, in um, Indonesia... We have the piercing of a uh, hole drilled and uh, put on a possible string for uh, um, a little bare finger. We also have uh, the splitting into little discs to make beads from boar's tusks. And the females and the young both lack tusks. This is an important thing, though, because the rock art they made seems to be the one without uh, a tusk. And it's dated to 35,400 uh, years ago. What's interesting is sometimes people think of art uh, as one, when they look at uh, Paleolithic art, as one big, like, like they go, like, in other words, you look into a cave and you see all the art, the assumption wrongly is that all the art was made at the same time by the same artist, you know, it, it completely wrong. In fact, some people thought before that like a handprint directly next to a piece of art was like signing the work. This is false because in Indonesia, there's a handprint that is dated to 39,900 years ago, where it is like a hands width away from the art that's 35.400 years ago, 35,400 years ago. So even though things are right together, doesn't always... In fact, there's a um, thing in France that they call the sorcerers, which is uh, a bull and a lion, and one of their legs makes, in a sense, looks like legs of an anthropomorphic, uh, you know, woman, because in the middle of the waist, it has a vulvic triangle. The interesting thing is, though, that uh, vulvic triangle was made a lot sooner, I mean, a lot older than um, the lion or the um, bull that was then later added to it. This helps understand that we have to understand really how the art is being laid down, not just that what we see as the final product of thousands of years of multiple people. So I had to um, go look up for myself to figure out where East Timor was in Indonesia in relation to Australia. But um, once you uh, look at it, you can kind of see wh where they could have followed, you know, migrating, could have followed the route of the islands and getting to Australia. 35,000 to 30,000 years ago, there is... Uh, Burial uh, with be little shell beads all over the head like a shell cap, and it has red ochre. Agrarian burials date to at least 30, uh, 7,000 to 30,000 years ago, belonging to the early phases period in Europe. And examples have been found at places like Sinclair, Russia. Remains of a man buried with 15,000 ivory beads. <laughs> and the uh, partial uh, burning uh, into the bones of the feet suggests that he was placed on embers. A burning, or oh, a burial uh, at the... Uh, Another cave in Shalavan, uh, a burial, like I said, wearing the cap, in a sense also um, there's one with a uh, deer teeth and red ochre, 
uh, around the face and uh, bone awls along the sides. Another one uh, in France with similar related traits to the shelter were uh, burials associated with red ochre, mollusks, flint tools, possibly even the leaving of food for like an ancestor to pass over to the other life. In Spain, two graves with, with uh, low mounds containing the shape of a body with, uh, in a sense, decapitated and uh, was covered with uh, animal bodies and buried with a quartzite knife. The sacred character of these mounds survived through the later occupations of the grave. In Delaunay Venos, a child burial with a necklace containing 27 pierced fox teeth and a skull also covered with red ochre. The uh, burial um, was placed below a complete mammoth uh, shoulder blades. Agurian in the Zagros Mountains dates back to about 35,000 years ago in Iran. The oldest lunar calendar is 34,000 years ago and speaks to an awareness by humans of the stars and the things in the heavens that <laughs> date to um, this agrarian culture in Europe. So if you are a religious believer, may I remind you that faith in the acquisition of knowledge is not a valid method worth believing in. Because what proof is faith of anything that our religion claims by faith? As people can have different faith even in the same religion. Thanks. Have a great day. Bye.